Hey, I'm going to shore up this whole deal right now about the book of James. All right. I'm going to just sum it up up front. The book of James is not about salvation. The book of James is about being justified in the eyes of other people, in the eyes of men. Okay. We are justified to God by faith alone, but we are justified to men by our works. Do you see? Okay. That's why there is no contradiction. Do you understand? It has to be read in context. So just remember, when you read the book of James, these things about uh, faith without works is dead and the demons believe and all that, they are always taken out of context. James is speaking to the 12 tribes of Israel scattered abroad, okay? And they were resting on their laurels going, well, you know, we're saved by faith without work, so I'm not going to do anything. And he's saying... There's hungry. Let, let me read it to you here. What does it profit, my brethren, though a man say he have faith and have not works? Can faith save him? But save him from what? Let's finish. If a brother or sister be naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you says to them, Depart in peace, be ye warmed and filled, notwithstanding you give not those things which are needful to the body, what does it profit? Even so, faith, if it have not works, is dead being alone. What's it say? Faith can't save this man from his hunger and being naked. All right? This is what it's about. It's about providing and doing the good works to help others as people of faith, okay? When it says faith without works is dead, it's not saying faith is not sufficient to save you. And if you finish the book, at the end, it says, but uh, Abraham, you can see Abraham was justified not by faith alone, but by also works. But to whom? To men, see? He explains it, and then he sums up the book by saying, but even Abraham had nothing to boast before God because he believed God and it was counted to him for righteousness. So he confirms faith alone for justify, justification in the eyes of God. All right. This entire book is just about being justified in the eyes of men and how we should live our faith so others can see it and we can walk in the predestined good works the Lord gave us to walk in. All right. This is about living our faith. He's saying our faith without the works is dead. It's not alive. It's not functioning. It's not doing anything. Okay? It's not saying the faith doesn't exist. Is the faith without works non-existent? No. It's dead. You know, I've said before, if I tell you my cat's dead, does it mean he doesn't exist? No. He's dead. It's just, I, I don't know why they don't understand this. Um, and, and it's so clear that James sums it up at the end, that faith alone is what saved Abraham. Okay, but in the eyes of men, he was justified because of the works he did. All right? And if you, you'll go back to the beginning, it talks about how Abraham was justified when he believed God because God preached the gospel to him and it said the whole world will be blessed through your seed that Jesus would come in his lineage and he believed the gospel and was justified it was many years later that he sacrificed his son or was going to in in obedience which justified him in the eyes of men okay but he was already justified to God by faith that was so men could see he was a man of God and that his faith was real okay we know that that sacrifice of his son was never something God was going to require of him. He was saying, I'm not going to take your children, but I'll give you my son. That's how much I love you. It was a foreshadow of his gift of his son. Okay. Um, a lot of people misunderstand that and think God's really cruel to ask him for it. No. Abraham knew, and it even says in scripture, that God would raise Isaac up from the very ashes because God promised that the nations will be blessed through the lineage of his son Isaac okay so he knew that either God would raise him from the dead or stop him before but in either case he trusted God he simply believed God okay so I want to explain that and then another one I'm sick of hearing Ray Comfort say well the demons believed Hitler believed it wasn't enough but on one side of his mouth he'll say we're saved by grace through faith and not of works but then tells you your faith isn't enough. See, it, th these people don't understand scripture. You have to have the Holy Spirit to teach you all truths. Okay, it's a perfect example of a man trying to understand or discern what God's saying here. All right, and it says, thou, um, 
And it says, Thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me your faith without your works, and I'll show you my faith by my works. Okay, that's just a statement of fact. Thou believest there is one God. Again, that's monotheism, not the gospel. Thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. But wilt thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead? Okay. He's rebuking these people and saying, you're claiming your faith, but you're acting no better than the demons. The demons have faith too, and they don't do anything good. You're not doing anything more than they are. It's just a rebuke. It's not... He's not saying, and anyway, they believe there's one God. They're not trusting in the sacrificial death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. Plus, they're not alive. Jesus said, whosoever liveth and believe, okay, they're not alive. It does, it's not applicable to them. And secondly, Hitler, uh, Ray Comfort, was not a tr believer in Christ. He was not a born-again Christian. He was a Roman Catholic occultist who denied the finished work of Christ. We know the man wasn't saved. Why would you do something like that and try to compare a person resting, entering into the rest of Jesus Christ, trusting in the sacrificial death, burial, and resurrection by faith alone and compare them to Hitler and demons? That's just a perfect example of somebody just resting scriptures to their own destruction. The unlearned and unstable do that. And they're unstable because they're never sure if they're really saved. And they might think they are because they're looking to themselves and how they've turned from their sins and living in holiness, as he calls it. But they're never trusting and resting in what Christ did. And it says we enter into his rest and we cease from all our works, our works trying to please God, okay? It's good that we do good works, all right? But this book is probably the most misunderstood book. Martin Luther wanted to get it taken out of the Bible. He just didn't understand it. You gotta remember these reformers, they all stemmed from Roman Catholicism. They know he even Luther said, uh, I didn't leave the Catholic Church, the Catholic Church left me. He never really got it. Okay, he did understand faith alone, kinda, but not really. I mean, he I pray he was saved, but he still had, you know, the Catholic doctrine and all these other uh doctrines, Lutheranism, Calvinism, they all stemmed from the, the whore. Of Babylon. I, I think it's the word Babylon. Anyway, it's one of the, at least it's one of them, because it all stems from ancient paganism that uh, earns God's favor by merit and works. All the, even Anubis from uh, Egypt, you had to weigh out things in the afterlife. So it all stems from pagan religions. This book here, remember when you're reading the book of James, it is always about justification in the eyes of other people but we're justified to God by faith alone. I said before, I don't understand when you tell somebody we're saved by grace through faith alone, and then they'll come right back, but faith without works is dead. Why are they saying that? Are they saying uh, it, it, it's faith alone, but you better do the works? Or it really isn't faith? What are they trying to tell you there? They, they don't understand what they're saying here. It is good. We should do the good works. If you see someone... Uh, uh, and I want to read this line again because so many people mix this up. What does it profit, my brethren, though a man say you have faith and have not works? Can faith save him if a brother or sister be naked and destitute of daily food? You have to keep reading it, okay? That is what he's saying. The works are required to, to save him from being hungry and naked, all right? Can it also, it, not doing it, just saying you have faith doesn't save you from judgment of other people either and them not seeing your faith. But this is so clear that it's justification in the eyes of men and not the eyes of God. Just read it again with that context and you'll be liberated. You'll be free. We have to stand firm in the liberty we have in Christ. And we do have it. Okay? When, when we don't walk in God's will for us, he will chasten us. He'll bring us back in line because he wants the best for us. He wants us to walk in, in his plan for our life, okay? But that is not what this means. And, and saying the demons believe and tremble does not mean faith is not enough, okay? we got to read it in context. So next time somebody uses that mess on you, you can school them on it, all right? God bless, guys.